Hey y'all, it's Anime Gaming, and today I'm going to be live reacting to Saint Seiya Episode 9. And now I'm going to strut this live reaction in. One, zero, go. Alright. Shamfreaky, he was that close. <laughs> But it surprised me though, all things considered, why did Iki's men run away from Seiya? Considering that Seiya didn't have his cloth on, all Iki needed to do was just transform, use his cloth, and he could have beat Seiya in probably a minute. Hmm. Yeah. Let's hope the writing's a bit more compact. In the future episodes. <laughs> oh, that is going to be an extreme PR hit. I wonder if Saudi can maybe sense where the golden cloth is at, the rest of the parts? Hmm. Uh, what, did I, what exactly did she notice? You know, I kind of want to see how she deals with the media, if she does deal with them. This. Hmm. You know, that's a valiant goal. Hmm. Gotta say, that's a good, that's an interesting goal. It's just the methods they used, though, to do that. Can you really blame Phoenix, though? I mean, he was sent there to the island against his will, so. Yeah, I ain't feeling any sympathy for Saudi's grandpa at all. Like, a zero. That dog is kind of cute. Aw, so cute. <laughs> I'm wondering if it was, say, just a troll. Oh, fuck! I had a feeling. Yo, I didn't watch the episode beforehand or read the manga. It just feels like something he would do just to troll the fuck out of them. <laughs> oh. It's actually pretty smart. Hmm. Oh, that stare off. The thing is, how long is this thing going to stay, though? Even if they find the harbor that they went at? <laughs> Dodger liked that he should have considered using a collar, but I guess that ain't say a style. 
Because I know in some parts of the U.S., if a dog bites a bystander, a, the person that owns the dog could be liable for for damages and all that. But then again, Seiya is a saint, so he'd probably be able to speed blitz if the dog does hit a random bystander by accident. <sighs> Sorry about the yawning, I didn't get much sleep last night. Aww. It's pretty cute though that Shun remembers things like that too. Aww. Aww, little Shun. <laughs> Such a bundle of joy. Um, yow. I can't blame him though. You can get some blisters in the tree, and that shit hurts. Hmm. Definitely was wise in his inner day, Ziki. And I like this too, you didn't get to see this in the Netflix Saint Seiya. Here it actually clarifies even more what the relationship was like. I mean yeah, Netflix Saint Seiya did a good job of showing the relationship when he saved them from being bullied. But here they're detailing it even more, their relationship, and I like that. Although he might be scared off by the cold weather, though. If he does actually go to the tree that Shun's at currently. Yo, why is Hilda making that park cold, though? Doesn't that seem a bit unnecessary? It's not like... Oh, wait, wait, wait. It could be an enemy, too. I remember we did see the leg of some kind of Saint Warrior. At the end of episode 8. So it's probably not Hyoga. Because I don't think Hyoga would flex like, yeah. He definitely is probably real. No, it can't be Hyoga. Yeah, I was right. All right. But in a way, this is interesting. Now we're going to see what Shun's capable of now that he has to utilize his intelligence to win fights. That's actually pretty cool. And I like that. When they show the face of a character, that means he's probably going to put up a fight. Versus the other Dark Saints. That ain't yoga. 
All right, cool. At least he realized it. Damn! Hopefully he can use a chain ability. Yes! Oh wait, what? How'd that happen? Oh, uh, don't get me wrong, I'm happy, but how? Unless somehow Hyoga showed up and maybe did a sneak attack, that's like the only way. Wait, so it's clock. Huh. So I guess this cloth was okay, okay then, after all. Hmm. Thought it was being fixed. I guess it's just Senya and Sinrio's cloth being fixed then. I mean, they look similar, but it's easy to identify them. Just go hit the one that's got the black cloth, and you'll be fine. Damn! Yeah, I'm actually on. Even the dog was scared! <laughs> but in a way, I kind of like this, considering that Seiya and. Considering that Yoga's confident nature. Sense the reason why he wouldn't want to team up with, say, uh, his own free will. Oh, snap. All right, good, good. He's going to show off his mastery over ice. I love that troll smile. Oh, he just barely dodged! <laughs> then just diamond dust the fool again! Come on, Nihoga, you can do it! Oh, snap, we're gonna... He got a dark shun?!
Dark Seiya and Dark Shinryu. <laughs> okay. I don't even know how they're gonna get out of this. No, not this bullshit again where let's just let the bad guys go. What happened to Icky's we're gonna kill the Seiya and the Saints? No. What the fuck do they need to go to? Like, what's the excuse? What is so important that they're gonna leave their mortal enemies behind? Ah, uh, not... Not this bullshit again. You've gotta be shitting me. I mean, it is a good way of establishing Dark's, Dark Seaginess's skills, though. I'll give it credit for that. I mean, yeah, it's getting interesting, but come on. They better have a good reason why they didn't just gang up on them. They better. If not, I'm going to be pissed off like it was in Episode 7. And I ain't afraid of calling out a Saint Say episode when it fucks up. Y'all know me. If I like a series, even if I like it, if it fucks up, I'm gonna call it out. Cause that's on, that is on some bullshit. Hopefully it's something like stealing the, um, the rest of the gold cloth, then I can understand it. Oh, it's actually kind of sweet, though, showing us her bond with the grandfather. It's actually in helping, giving, giving us some characterization as to why she always thinks about her grandfather. Even though he died years ago. That's actually pretty cute. Aww. And I like this sequence. And it's natural. If a person does lose a relative or a parent, it stands to reason that they would be praying for God. Wait, he actually showed up? All right. That's pretty much... Oh, okay. Oh, that isn't telling her anything new, though. Technically. Wait, if he's the first attack line, I don't even want to imagine what the second or third lines are. I don't even want to imagine their power. Jeez Louise. And I do understand her um, trepidations and all that. But the thing is, when it comes to people, different people in life have different ambitions. That's the thing. And another thing, all those same words are taken when they were kids, so... It's gonna be hard to collide all their... It's gonna be hard to collide all of their interests. Just saying. Hmm. At least he's setting it straight. And that's a good point. You attract more bees with honey than utilizing vinegar. Gotta admit, that sequence was amazing. You actually see Saori emote emotions, cry. You get to 
We've seen the womanly side of her, the hard stern version, but now we get to see the inner, we get to see her inner, um, her inner gentleness that actually gives her much more layers to her personality. So that sequence is great. All right, he better have a good excuse for this shit. Okay, let's see. Okay. That's it! He could not have waited for these fuckers to kill Seiya, Yoga, and Shun. This is stupid as fuck! Oh. Oh lord. The writing's gone to shit again. It's gone to shit. Uh, kill the... Oh, that's adorable! They want to kill the four bronze saints when they could have killed three of them this episode! Three of them! Oh! What the fuck is happening to the writing of this series? It's fallen off a cliff. It's fallen off of a fucking cliff. Oh, fuck. Let, let me just um, take all this bullshit in. Because here, like, here's the thing about this episode. The Saori stuff was amazing. The sequence when Seiya gets the dog was great. But then the final sequence, it just shits all over most of the positivity that I was starting to form about these specific episodes. Like, it's plot holes. Let's just be real. Let, 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 I'm not going to pussyfit this shit. We... Episode 8, you literally had Iki say with conviction that he wants to kill Seiya and the Saints. That's what literally happened in episode 8. Like, I just barely watched episode 8, like an hour ago. So I'm pretty sure my memory's not failing me. And then in this episode, right when they're about to kill Seiya and, and company, conveniently Iki's all like, oh no, no, come back, come back. Gives him some fucking gold pieces. Then he's all like, oh yeah, let's kill them in the Saints. And I'm like, fuck you. You've got to be fucking kidding me. It feels like in the last few episodes, the writing staff just writes themselves in a fucking corner. And then the writing staff's all like, oh shit. Like, how am I going to get Seiya and the words out of this? Oh yeah, I know. Why don't I just fucking... Right, plot holes and make Iki a dumbass again so that the saints can survive because I just fucking didn't find another way to get out of the corner I just previously brought myself in. This is just stupid! And it's sad too because if it wasn't for this final sequence, this episode would have been amazing. That emotional sequence with Saori was, was great. But... I'd be a lying sack of shit if I rated this an above average episode because this can't be an above average episode. It fucking makes the same mistakes that episode 7 made. So, again, I'm going to have to rate this episode a 4.9 out of 10. It's, I mean, it's better than episode 7, but I can't rate it average because... It just gets so many things wrong. Like, how the fuck do you fall into the same trappings that episode 7 fell? It's like, I understand making a mistake once from a writing standpoint, but then you make the same mistake, and now they make the same mistake. They have the same character, Iki, make it twice. Like, why? Why? <sighs> fuck. So, yeah. 
That's why I thought this episode was below average. Because literally they could not even that, they could have literally thought of shit to fucking avoid this. Maybe they could have have um, uh, Jabu somewhat recover, maybe? They could have had maybe Jabu show up here. Maybe he was trailing one of the saints, helping track the sand. I don't know, something like that. They could have had Jabu there. Maybe find some BS excuse for Hydra's, uh, for Geki to be there, and for Hydra to be there. And then they could have had like maybe 6v4, and then Iki could have been like, okay, Dark Saints, you're outnumbered. You gotta come back. That that way, at least they would have had an excuse to wire of, okay, the good side, they're too fucking stacked. We can't attack them. Come back. If they would have done that, okay, they could have potentially avoided a plot hole. But no, it just... It, but no. And the Netflix series pulled the same bullshit too. The same say, uh, so... I called it out when it did it there, and I'm calling it out when it does it here. But other stuff was well done. I like the yoga snow effects. The shun chains looked good. And the Saori moments where she was crying shows you character development and all that. So I do like that because now she realizes she has to be a bit more gentler with the saints. So there were good elements here. And that's why this episode didn't get a 1, 2, or a 3 out of 10 or a 4. It got a 4.99 because it did every, it did a lot of things good. It just it falling for the same trappings of episode 7. It just pissed me the fuck off, y'all. So yeah, everyone... These are my thoughts on episode 9. Be sure to comment on your thoughts on the episode.